Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It's so great to see all your beautiful faces once again. If you have not been here before, my name is Jamie Fenn, and in today's video, I'm going to explain how and why you should always smooth out your keyframes in DaVinci Resolve. Now, when you adjust parameters in DaVinci Resolve and you want them to change over time, you will set keyframes. And those keyframes by default are going to be linear, meaning they go from point A to point B to point C and so on, just a straight line. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to round those off and make your video look a little bit more organic and not so robotic. Some examples of how I use keyframes is when I do speed ramping in the edit tab, when I'm adjusting parameters in Fusion, and sometimes when I'm editing my audio. Those are the three examples of what I'm going to cover today. Now, you don't have to smooth out every single keyframe you have in your videos. It really does come down to personal taste. I just find myself smoothing out pretty much every keyframe I put in my videos, unless I'm going for a very specific linear look. And by the way, if this is the second or third time you've seen one of my videos and you haven't subscribed already, well, that's the universe telling you you should subscribe. So make sure to do so and like this video if you find it helpful and comment down below and let me know what you think. So with that said, let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and get started. All right, so here I have a clip. This is my friend Connor, and I'm going to do some basic speed ramping. So I'm going to go about right here. I'm going to right click on the clip and select Retime Controls. Click on this down arrow, add speed point. I'm going to make this slow motion. Let's just do 50%. And then I'm going to have it speed ramp to the point right when he gets to that first Yahoo something. I don't know what he's doing. Then I'm going to get to the point of right here, add a speed point, make this really quick. So it goes from slow motion to that, and then also make this slow. So this looks really good. It's just super quick. So essentially you kind of created keyframes with these speed changes. So I'm going to right click on the clip, select retime curve, and this will bring up the adjustments for the retiming. Now by default, it goes to retime frame, which is not what you want to adjust the keyframes for. You actually want to click on this down arrow and select retime speed. Now you can see we have a very linear jump. It just goes from slow to fast to slow. But in order to make these smooth, you can just select the little keyframes that we've created here. It will turn red once you select it. Come up here to the curve, select that curve. Let's go ahead and do that again with this. Select that. And now we have a little bit more of a smooth speed ramp effect. Now you can do this with all different types of parameters, for example. So I'm going to turn off the retime curve and the controls. I'm going to select some random thing like maybe some zoom and the rotation and the position. And what I want to do is just move over the position so he's in the middle. And then also maybe even rotate it a little bit. And then when it gets to a certain point, maybe to the, where the speed ramp is, I'll have the rotation angle go back to zero, position back to zero, and the zoom back to one. So now we have something that looks like that. But again, it's very linear because we just created specific points. So we can go ahead and click on this right here or right click on the clip and select retime curve. Let's go ahead and click here now. So let's go ahead and click on that down arrow again and turn off the parameters that we don't want to see. So for example, maybe we'll just keep zoom X and Y selected, select the line that it creates. And you can see these little points that create keyframes. So we can just go ahead and round these out. And you can select any of these up here. Each of them will give you a different curve, but I typically just like to select this middle one here or even that one. So now it's nice because it eases in the effect. And what's cool is once you do round out these keyframes, it creates another point that you can adjust and kind of create the curve that you want to select and customize really how you want the effect to look. So maybe we can do something crazy with kind of like almost like a boomerang, like and yeah. So you can do that with any parameter that you select. You just have to make sure you select it down here on the drop list. And whenever you do select any type of keyframe here, it will pop up over here on the left hand side. You just have to click on that down arrow and customize your keyframes. Let's move into Fusion. All right, so here we are in Fusion. Let's say we just want to add some quick text real quick and put in Connor. Now with the text node selected, over here on the right-hand side, whenever you see a little icon for keyframes is something that you can customize parameters for. So let's go ahead and just say we want to adjust the center X and Y. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the clip. 
move this over out of view. And then when it comes to zoom in, I want it to get to this point right here. And so now we have some basic text animation that's just happening, nothing too crazy. But if we want to customize it, there's no, there's no like drop down menu for any of these text nodes really. So in order to customize the keyframes that we just created, we actually want to come up here to the spline. Now you can see here we have text, center path, and displacement. If you select text, it will show you the keyframes over the timeline. So if we actually push plus on our keyboard and zoom in, you can see that now we have some keyframes here. Now the quickest way to make these nice and smooth is by selecting one keyframe and then just simply pushing F on your keyboard. And that will round out any of the keyframes that we've created. Now say you want to animate the size. Let's go ahead and go to the very beginning. I'm going to come over here to the right hand side and select a keyframe. And then when I want it to get really big, I will just make the size much bigger like that. And then say we want to create another keyframe of some sort. I'm going to add a soft glow real quick and just change the color. So now say we want to adjust another keyframe real quick and we want the glow to happen when it becomes centered in the frame right about there. I can just set another keyframe there and then click on that back arrow that will take me to my previous keyframe. I'm going to turn the blend all the way down. So now when it comes to the middle of the frame, it's the full effect. So as you can see down here in the spline window, we've been selecting keyframes and creating them over a specific amount of time. Now, when you have a ton of keyframes, it kind of gets clustered in this window. So what's really nice is say, if I wanted to turn off the text and just see the soft glow and the blend keyframe, well, now we can just simply see the keyframes for the blend. So again, real quick, we can just push F on our keyboard, select the next keyframe, push F, and now you can see we have some customization with, again, these kind of really cool tools that it gives us here. And say, I just want to create something really wild and just go like this. And I can even click in the spline window and just move this around. So now you can see that we'll have something that creates some weird automation like that. And yeah. What's great about this is if you start creating composites and they get super crazy with keyframes, it's great to be able to organize it and just kind of turn off what you don't want to see. You can select specific keyframes and work individually with everything. And say if you have keyframes that you want to match up, you can simply just see them all in the window together. So if you need to time certain things, it's really easy to match up and just kind of click and drag and get things where you need them to be. Okay, so now real quick with audio. If I wanna create a keyframe, all I have to do is hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard come to where my mouse turns into this double arrow going up and down, hold down Alt or Option and click. Now you can create multiple points if you want to adjust specific volume levels. For example, this peak right here, I may wanna bring it down a little bit. So in order to do so, I need to create another point and then another point here. And then what's cool is I can let up off of Alt or Option on my keyboard and just drag down on this middle line and have it match up with the rest of the waveform. Now, if I zoom in, what's really nice about these keyframes is all you have to do is right click on it and select ease in. Same thing here. If I do something very dramatic, let's do something like this. Let's try over here so you can kind of see it a little bit better. So I'm going to adjust just this specific waveform. Let's go kind of crazy with it so you can see. I'm going to select a keyframe or a point, right click on it and just select ease in or ease out. It's not super easy to see how the effect is affecting the audio like you can in the edit tab in the fusion tab. But if you right click and you select ease in, you can see how these adjust the audio accordingly. So I selected ease in here. And if I select linear, you can see how much of a difference there is now. Anyways, that's it for me, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.